Hi, everybody. I know you're just dying to hear more about data. Well, actually, this is a data story with a bit of a twist, because we're going to talk about people and data, and how do we get these data people into our organizations. So let's get started. I've got three points for you, and let's, you can think of them as hacks, right? Because we're all in startups, and we all need to recruit and get data people into our organizations. And these are three ways that you can do that, which maybe the traditional companies are not currently doing. So the first one is use project-based job descriptions. And by that, I mean you've got to articulate your problem and then put that in your job description. The second one is hire self-learners. And I've got a special announcement for you today, uh, a new data science course that we're launching today. And I'll tell you more about that in a moment. And then lastly, leverage the gig economy. I work in data science education, so I do have homework for you. And we'll cover that on the last slide. All right, so who am I? My name is Shingai, founder of Fireside Analytics, as you heard. Um, I teach data science through highly customized online courses. My clients are governments, they're business, they're senior executives, they're educational institutions, they're high school students, and they're young kids between 5 and 12 through my children's book. Now, the cognitive class uh, on that side that you see is a platform that's owned by IBM, and that's where I do my course curricula, majority of my course curricula development. I'm also on Coursera, and my courses have been taken, and you've heard over 300,000 people have registered for them. And then the last cool piece that I'll just quickly mention is I'm also the principal of a high school, and uh, we've developed a private high school that has an online data science curriculum for high school students in Ontario. And we've also been inspected by the Ministry of Education, so your high school learner can actually get a credit towards their high school diploma. So we are trying to you know, get the traditional education system to empower our youth and learn future skills. So doing this fun work in data science education, I get to go to cool places, and I get to talk to people like you. But let's jump in. I don't want to take it for granted that we're all on the same page about what we mean when we say data. And in terms of becoming more data-driven within your individual startups, I'd like you to think of data as anything digital. If you typed the letter A on a mobile device today or on a computer or on a watch, then you are generating data. Right? That's the conversation that we're having right now. So when I talk about hiring, perhaps you're at different stages. Some of you are working with artificial intelligence. Some of you are really just starting with basic metrics for your startup and figuring out how do we become more data-driven? How do we do this thing? This talk is for you. Data science, on the other hand, is I call it the process of ethically acquiring. The word ethic is good. Right? We want to get data responsibly, and we want to use it responsibly. We're going to engineer that data, which means we have to get it into a form that we can use, analyze it, visualize it, and ultimately use that to, to make some money. We want to monetize the data. This is what that process looks like. And this is where I got some of the data that I'm going to be sharing with you today. Accessing an API, I, in this particular example, I use Glassdoor. So we ethically acquire the data. We engineer it. So in this case, I had to get it from a JSON file into um, a computer programming language. I'm an R user. I know many Python users. We'll debate that after the talk. So get into some computer programming language where you can do some stuff with it, whatever your needs are. And then ultimately, you want to be able to visualize it, tell the story so that you can get some sort of uh, a result that you can monetize or uh, inform your objective function for your business. Now, a lot of people are trying to get this done, as you heard through all the different talks today. What's interesting is, if you look for the term data scientist and you look for the jobs that are currently listed under that, Glassdoor, we've got 216, and LinkedIn is 192 in Montreal. Right. If you look for the term data, that number jumps to 5,400 on Glassdoor and 5,000 on uh, LinkedIn and then developer 1,400, 2,200, et cetera. Why the jump from data scientist to data? Well, using that Glassdoor API, if we punch in the word data and write a query that just pulls out all the job descriptions that have the word data in them, you'll see it's a very broad spectrum covering everything from data entry to data scientist to data engineer to data analyst. 
And it, there is a lot of confusion within the industry when we put out those job descriptions around what do we want this person to do in our organization. And I call this, uh, this talk data and dev because you'll notice it's a similar situation with the term developer. Um, what you'll find is even what we're calling a full stack developer now, because a lot of our products and our startups are digitally based, we're working with platforms, we're working with apps, we're working with websites, we actually expect that person to have some data skills as well. So this intersection of these job titles that traditionally were quite linear is part of why some of you might be having challenges recruiting. So how do you solve the problem? How do startups get data and dev talent? So I'll show you a job description. This is by Morgan Stanley in Montreal. It's a current job description. It's real. And it starts like this. There's a lot of words. Don't worry about the details. But it follows a typical pattern. Multiple programming languages. We've got Python, R, Java, Scala, and we want you to have SQL as well. And then we've got data mining, analytical work. We've got quickly learn new tools and a number of other options. Then they cheated a little bit. They went and put an entirely new job description in there as well and said, well, skills we would like, we would also like you to know how to develop natural language processing models. We want you to do machine learning. And we want you to have experience with Linux command line, because guess what? We also want you to do big data. Who responds to a job ad like this? Right? It's the person who believes they can walk into an interview and convince you that they know I have done all this different stuff. And it's actually very well documented that women tend to not apply for jobs where they don't feel qualified for a lot of the criteria that are included. So the first tip or hack that I would give you is if you're trying to recruit data science uh, talent into your organization, particularly a startup, is use project-based job descriptions. And what do I mean by that? I mean articulate the problem that you would like the data scientist to solve and put that in your job description. Because I have a lot of students. I have students at a um, private college that I teach in Toronto, um, distributed systems and business analytics, and they come to me with the same issues. Shanghai, we've got these skills. We go to the job market, but they want me to have this and I have this. I have five out of the 15 things that they ask for. Should I still apply? So don't alienate those candidates. They're great candidates, but you need to tell them exactly what you want them to do when they get to the job. And I won't leave you hanging. Here is a classic way to get that done. A lot of these data scientists are doing competitions like Kaggle, and these competitions are already speaking to, to the right audience. And look at how they frame their projects. They tell you what data set you're going to be using, and they tell you what problems so you're going to be solving. So here's a classic example. We're going to be using news to predict stock movements. Boom. A student, a working professional who's taught themselves data science skills, knows exactly what's going to be required of them in the job. So you know your use cases. You have a sense of the types of problems that you want to solve. You have a sense of the types of um, machine learning algorithms that you want to develop. Include as much detail as you can in the job description from a, pr a project perspective, rather than just spitting out every single skill that you've heard is associated with data science. So that's the first thing, is use those project-based job descriptions. The next thing is hire self-learners. So a lot of these technologies are new. Um, we always talk about Facebook is 15, 16 years old, um, Scala, uh, Spark, I think seven or eight years old. So from that perspective, if the technology is new, you want somebody who's constantly looking to reinvent themselves and looking to learn. And one of the best ways to find those types of people is people who've taken MOOC, platform, uh, MOOC courses. So like I said, I teach MOOC courses. That's my game, data science education. What's nice now is that people post their certificates of completion online. So you can bypass the traditional recruitment channels and actually just go and look at who is completing these courses, and then you can start to filter out the self-learners. And another reason we like self-learners is because they've done the work for you. You're not going to be having to get anybody to do professional development, uh, chasing them. Have you taken the course? Have you done the thing? Have you done the thing? These are people who are already putting up their hand to say, yes, I am willing and interested, and I want to learn. So if you're a startup and you're looking to hire data science and dev talent, go and look at the MOOC platforms, look at Coursera, look who's completing those, look who's posting and telling you about the work that they've done, and work with them. 
GitHub, another great location, and look at the hackathons and uh, competitions like Kaggle. Now, very exciting news that we're launching today. This is hot off the press. Nobody knows about it yet. Fireside Analytics did a project uh, with the National Energy Board of Canada. And they gave us open data sets and said, let's create a course to teach open data to folks who are new to data science. So this is the course. It's now available. You can find it on cognitiveclass.ai. That's the IBM website. And the course is entirely free. So many thanks to the National Energy Board of Canada for making that possible. But if some of you are sitting here and you're thinking, well, I need to acquire some data science skills, where do I go to get them? Cognitiveclass.ai, and this is a great place to start because there's no IT or coding background required. It's really walking you through a process of how do you get your head around this data science thing. And look, ultimately, you're going to be hiring people potentially, but it's good for you to pick up some skills so you know to ask those people the right questions. Point number three is leverage the gig economy. When I was starting my company and having to design these customized data science courses, I ran into capacity issues. Like you, I was looking at the market and thinking, where can I find data scientists who not only can do computation, but can also deliver teaching and training materials? So one of the hacks that I discovered was Fiverr. Now, Fiverr is an open platform where you can go and find people with skills. They register themselves, and they're willing to do small projects for a fee. What's good about this was I was able to break down a big data science project into subdivisions and then go and find different developers on Fiverr so they could produce small pieces of it, and then I could bring it back and knit it together. That way, I could keep my, my IP. I wasn't putting my project up online because different people were working on only small parts of the project. At least I got to keep um, my project private. Right, so that's another great hack is make use of the gig economy. You don't have to be hiring the $81,000 data scientist, which is actually the average salary in Montreal. Potentially, if you can't do that right now, then start with breaking down your project into component parts and try using something like Fiverr. Ripen is a new one that I've uh, recently come across. And that one's great because I think the, the fee is 1,000. Don't quote me on that. For that fee, you actually get access to, I think, two projects where you're linked to uh, professors at academic institutions who work with students who are looking for projects. So if you need some development work done, and potentially you're still thinking about how and who and how much, then this might be a great avenue because they can get you to the point where you've got an MVP, for example. And then that way, you can demonstrate something. And when you need to raise money, you've got something to show uh, without you having to go and spend excessive amounts of money. An option that a lot of people like to consider is, well, maybe I can outsource this to India or China. It's, you know, you've potentially heard that or done it yourselves, that it might be cheaper for you to go and get those skills there. For me, when I was uh, looking at different ways to get projects off the ground, um, I was concerned about IP, that I was going to contact a company on the internet, I was going to give them my ideas, they were going to create the thing, and then you know, it was going to be sitting somewhere with it. Even with the NDAs, I had that concern. That was my, my risk aversion. Potentially, that works. Uh, for those of you who are looking at options, if you're within Canada, Tech Access is actually a government-funded organization. They've got centers all over the country, and they can actually help you get your development work done in the country, and they can do it for much more reasonable fees than if you were trying to raise a lot of money to do it yourself in-house. So that's another great option for you as a startup. I mentioned I have a high school that teaches data science, so I'm going to give you some homework. And the homework is this. Talent doesn't build itself. At any point, someone is going to have to invest in the learning. Whatever your talent and your skill set is, if you think back to where and how you learn those skills, somebody invested time and resources to get you there. So you've got to be doing this continuous training with your existing staff, whether they're data science staff or dev staff, to make sure that they're keeping up uh, with their skill set. Right. And then the other thing that we always like to do is for high school is go to the high school that you attended and talk to them about the work you're doing. 
talk to them about technology and entrepreneurship, and talk to them about the emerging jobs. So that at least when they enter universities and they enter um, tertiary education institutions, they know that, hey, technology is the future and those are potentially skills that I need to get. So I, I, I'm quite serious about this. I do request that you take your homework seriously um, and go to your high school or a high school near you and give a tech talk to that community so that they can start to build up those skills. And that's it, folks. Project-based job descriptions based on the problem that you're trying to solve. Hire self-learners. They're the best people to work in your organization because they've already shown the initiative. And then lastly, leverage the gig economy. But don't leave it there. Invest in training and education. Build the pipeline. Thank you for your time. <laughs>